Welcome in Genshin Impact players old and new. My name is Raxophone and today I'm going to be showing you guys five of the best units that you can build in Genshin Impact at any point in your journey, whether you're AR10 or AR55. All of the characters that I'm going to be talking about today are going to be four star units and they'll all be incredibly valuable for your team. And overall, I believe that these are characters that every single player should build as soon as they have the opportunity to. Now with that being said, if you're not new to the channel, you probably already have these characters built because these are characters that I reference all the time in a lot of my videos. But I hope that older players who are more experienced and that players who are just now coming into the game can all learn something new from this video so I'd encourage you to watch it anyways and see if you learn something. Keep in mind for this list that it's not actually going to be in any particular order we're just listing five characters that are very strong. And the last thing I want to mention is that I have a guide for every single one of these characters on my channel right now so if you're interested in learning more about them or how to build them all of the links to all of those guides will be in the description of this video and you should be able to find all the information you're looking for. There is one exception but that guide will be out very soon. Now let's get started with number one. The very first character that we're going to be talking about today is Bennett. Surprise, surprise, the character that everyone underrated at the start of Genshin Impact's lifespan was found to be a lot better than people took him for and became one of the most used units in the entire game. Now, there are still a lot of Bennett non-believers out there, and part of that might just be contrarianism, or it might just be that they think he makes the game too easy, but regardless, it's always good to have the option of having Bennett built in case there's any content that you struggle with. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Bennett is insanely good for a lot of reasons. First off, Bennett has an elemental skill that is on a very short cooldown. You're able to use it to deal a little bit of damage, but on top of that, it can generate energy particles, and because the cooldown is so short, Bennett actually becomes a decent battery for a lot of pyro characters. In simpler terms, you run him with another pyro character, they get to use their elemental burst more often. Now, in terms of elemental burst, Bennett has probably one of the best ones in the entire game. It's basically a super buff. It's going to give you a portion of Bennett's base attack based on the talent level of the elemental burst. Now, for those of you who don't know, Bennett Base attack is actually a combination of your weapon's base attack, the weapon's attack without any of the stats applied to it, as well as Bennett's attack without any artifacts or weapons on. Bennett's elemental burst will apply that portion of attack based on the talent level to whatever character is in the burst actively. The amount of attack that it gives is actually insane and it'll increase your team's damage output by a ton. On top of that, even though it only affects the on-field character, there's a mechanic in the game called snapshot, which is basically when a character is able to retain stats that they used at the start of their elemental skill or burst and just keep those through the entire duration of their burst. So you can use a character that can take Bennett's buff stats, keep them while off the field while also using their elemental burst, and it just ends up being a really sick combination. On top of that, Bennett's elemental burst is also a heal, so he becomes a healer and buffer for your entire team. His burst can also cleanse by removing any elemental aura you have on your character and replacing it with pyro. Another thing to note is that there's an artifact set that's seemingly tailored just to Bennett. It's going to give your entire team a 20% attack buff for about 12 seconds after someone casts their elemental burst. Now, if you weren't aware, Bennett's elemental burst lasts for exactly 12 seconds. Now, there is a lingering attack buff for three seconds after the burst goes away, but essentially this buff lines up directly with Bennett's burst, and it's going to help buff the rest of your team just by casting Bennett's burst on cooldown. As long as you level up your Bennett and his elemental burst talent, it really doesn't matter what stats you give him, as long as he has some energy recharge to make sure that he can use his burst super often. He's an incredibly valuable member of your team, and even at low investment, he's pretty good, but you'll definitely see high returns if you invest into him by actually building his artifacts and giving him a solid weapon. Whether you're an old player or new player, I highly recommend you build Bennett. He is going to be one of the greatest assets to many of the top teams in Genshin Impact, and he's just absolutely insane. The next character I want to talk about is Shang Ling. Now, when I was a wee lad, when I was new to the game, I didn't understand the sheer power of Shang Ling, the Pokemon trainer of the Stove God. But as time has gone on, Shang Ling has found herself in tons of top teams with an astounding amount of different units. Now, one of the key things things for Shangling, and one of the reasons that she's such a highly respected and advocated for unit is that she's actually 100% free to play accessible. You can get a free Shangling at AR20 once you beat the Spiral Abyss third floor, third chamber, and let me tell you, she is absolutely insanely good for a completely free to play character. Shangling has amazing pyro application, but she also is able to deal tons of damage. She's competing for top damage spots with other pyro units, and for a four star, that's just really impressive. As I mentioned before, she's used in many top teams like Nash 
additional variants and Melt Ganyu. And as I sort of talked about with Bennett's buff, she is actually one of the characters that can snapshot those stats. So she can take the stats of Bennett's buff, activate her elemental burst, and retain those stats even when she's off the field. On top of that, one of her best weapons is going to be the catch. And if you don't have access to the catch yet, you will later because it's a completely free to play accessible weapon. It is a pole arm that has energy recharge on the main stat, but gives you crit damage on your burst and elemental burst damage just in the passive with no requirements at all. She's the best completely free to play accessible character from her weapon to her actual character itself. And I cannot emphasize enough how incredibly powerful and worth building Shangling is. The third character that I'm going to recommend every single player in Genshin Impact build if they have the opportunity is Sing Cho. I might be mispronouncing Sing Cho a little bit, but I know it's definitely not Sing Q or Sing Kui. Sing Cho is an amazing unit for a number of reasons. One of them being that he's a Hydro character and Hydro is definitely one of the strongest elements in the game that sadly just can't reach its full potential yet because there's not enough Hydro units in Genshin Impact. However, Sing Cho does his job extremely well. He's going to deal off field Hydro damage with this elemental burst by shooting these rain swords at enemies and applying hydro, which will allow your pyro characters to vaporize, your cryo characters to freeze, your electro characters to proc electro charge. Hydro is just the secret king of reactions here, and Singchal makes it usable in so many different ways. Now, if you pair up Singchal with any pyro unit in the game, their damage is going to be multiplied by one and a half times if you're playing them correctly. That's because of the vaporize reaction, which when it's pyro on hydro is technically called a reverse vaporize. It gives you one and a half times damage. However, if you were to reverse that it would be a regular vaporize and it would be two times damage for hydro on pyro. But just in general, Singchul massively increases the damage of all the pyro units in the game. His damage itself at high investment is very, very good. And on top of that, when he has rain swords surrounding him, which he'll get from his elemental skill and elemental burst, he gives you damage reduction. Now that damage reduction is going to make it so that you take less damage from enemies and gives you a lot more survivability in general. And that combined with the little bit of healing it gives you from his ascension passive makes Singchul a very well-rounded unit that is incredible incredibly powerful with investment. He's used in a ton of top teams and is highly sought after. One last thing I want to mention about Sing Chol is his elemental skill actually has very, very high scaling and it can deal a decent chunk of damage to multiple enemies at once. And just due to the nature of how his kit works, if you're using a character like Hu Tao, Yormia, Diluc, Shangling, Yanfei, any pyro unit in the game, they're going to get an absurd amount of value from building Sing Chol. The fourth character I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is going to be Amy, or you can just call her Fischl. Fischl is an incredibly powerful unit that saw a little bit of fall off in how many people were playing her at the release of Raiden. Now, when Raiden released, the main thing that people used her for was, one, she was just really comfortable to use, she felt really cool to use, but two, she offered as much battery as Fischl and more. Now, that combined with the fact that Fischl is an older unit that was around since release just made her not played as much. But with the return of her on the recent banner, we have seen a huge spike in the amount of players using Fischl. And to clarify, she never fell off as a character. She has always been incredibly strong, incredibly valuable, and almost always a must-have for Electro-based teams. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, Fischl is an amazing battery. 50% of the hits she does with Oz out on the field are going to generate an energy particle that's going to go back to Fischl or whoever you have out on the field, and that will help you use your elemental burst more often. Now, one of the great things about Fischl is that she doesn't need investment to get that sort of value. She's always going to be a good battery, regardless of what level she is, because just having Oz out on the field will be enough to generate that energy. But in high-end content and at high investment from Fischl, she is extremely good. Since her damage can scale up to be very, very high, she can output a lot of damage in many different types of teams. And on top of that, she can hold tons of different artifact sets, which makes her a super flexible character in terms of building her for damage. You can even give her the Tenacity of the Millilith set, which will give your entire team a passive 20% attack bonus whenever Oz is dealing damage. Having a character with a summon that's basically putting the game on autopilot as far as energy generation goes and extra damage goes, makes Fischl one of the strongest units in the entire game. And at C6, she becomes what I like to to call a secret five star. Whether you're an old or newer player, Fischl is definitely worth investing into. Now, the fifth and final character we're going to be talking about today is Sucrose. For some reason, a lot of players still stray away from Sucrose. Now, it might be her clunkiness, it might be her elemental burst not working all the time, or maybe it's just that you have Kazuo or Venti. But Sucrose is an amazing character and used in so many top teams because she just brings so much value to the table. First off, she's a four star character with access to Viridus and Venera. Now, if you don't know what Viridus and Venera does, it's an an artifact set that makes enemies lose resistance to any element that you swirl. Swirlable elements are Hydro, Cryo, 
Bio, Pyro, and Electro. So if you swirl any of those elements, it's going to make enemies take more damage from those elements. So any other character on your team that deals damage to enemies with that same element that got swirled will get it buffed by a ton. It's an incredibly useful utility, and almost every single team in the game wants someone with Viridescent Venera. So you can also pass Elemental Mastery to the rest of your team and buff their reaction damage. Now, a lot of Sucrose's abilities, including Constellations and her passive abilities, will pass Elemental Mastery in some way, shape, or form to other members of your team. So that means if you're running a Vaporizer Melt team, you're going to be increasing the damage that you get with Vaporizer Melts after using Sucrose. She's in Taser, variants of National, even in some Freeze variants. She's just very flexible. And on top of that, her skill and burst are both grouping utilities. If you have a lot of mobs in one place, you can use her elemental skill to drag them to the middle, assuming they're movable or not heavy mobs. And the same thing applies to her burst. On top of that, her damage on field is actually super good without even focusing on building her for damage. When Sucrose swirls with elemental mastery, she's dealing a nice chunk of damage anyways, and you want to build her with full elemental mastery to maximize that damage. However, if you don't know, elemental mastery actually scales on the level of the character. So if you level Sucrose to 90 and you're using her to drive a team like Taser, where you're constantly dealing electro damage, hydro damage, and swirling both, you're going to get a lot of damage out of Sucrose without having to build anything like attack percent, crit, or any of that. And in addition to all of those wonderful perks, she can also hold the book Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which is a three-star catalyst that gives a character on your team an insane attack buff for a certain period of time after switching off of Sucrose. So with all of Sucrose's utility, where she gives you elemental mastery, she debuffs enemies, and she can also pass attack to your other characters, Sucrose really stands out as one of the strongest units in Genshin Impact, and she is a four-star. She's just incredibly strong, and I cannot recommend building Sucrose enough. These have been the top five characters that you need to build in Genshin Impact. Have you built any of these characters? Which ones have you found to be your personal favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or just found it helpful, it would mean a bunch if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And consider going over to twitch.tv slash Braxophone and dropping a follow if you like live content. We stream a couple days a week over there and I'd love to see you there. I'm going to be putting out more new player friendly content over time since there's many new players to Genshin right now and I hope you guys will continue to watch and enjoy the content. Thanks everyone and I will see you next time. Thank you.